Hello, and welcome to the Joyful Bookshelf, where books are fun. Subscribe for new books read aloud every week. Warm as Wool by Scott Russell Sanders, illustrated by Helen Cogancherry. It was an icy place to live in the winter, this rough cabin in a clearing. No matter how much clay William and Sarah padded between the logs, no matter how many leaves Joshua raked against the walls outside, wind kept slicing through the gaps. Frost gathered on the dirt floor. Snow lit the woods with cold white light as far as the children could see, and drifts kept rising at the door. The clothes the children had worn since moving out here to the Ohio frontier were tattered and frayed. Betsy Ward sewed patches on their patches, and still the cold played music on the children's ribs. The wind whistled about their knees. Josiah Ward said, Throw another bearskin on the bed, wrap their feet in sacks when they go out to play. But every bearskin in the cabin was already piled on the bed. The children already wore every stitch and rag they owned. And still they shivered and their teeth chattered. Betsy Ward needed wool, lots of it, to make them cozy new clothes. From Connecticut, she had brought a spinning wheel to spin wool into thread, a loom to weave it into cloth, and a sock full of coins to buy sheep. She had saved these coins for sheep, and she would spend them on nothing else. But what good were money and wheel and loom when there wasn't so much as a solitary lamb within a hundred miles of her farm? And so, when a herd of sheep drifted by the cabin one day in the spring, Betsy Ward imagined each animal a walking blanket, a four-legged frock, a pair of pantaloons on the hoof. Joshua, Sarah, and William peeked out from behind her skirts at these strange animals. The sheep had walked from Pennsylvania, and their fleece was bedraggled with twigs and cockleburrs and dirt. Josiah Ward thought that they were pretty sorry-looking beasts. Betsy Ward did not give a hoot how filthy they were. Wool was wool, and would keep a body warm. "'How much do you want for those sheep?' she asked the drover. Glancing at the log cabin, the man answered, More than you've got. You're right about that, said Josiah Ward. Hold on there, said Betsy Ward. She hurried indoors, then returned, blinking into the daylight. I have a stocking here, she said, holding up the sock full of coins. Josiah Ward and the children grinned, for they had forgotten about the sock. The drover stopped his herd. He stroked his chin. I promised these sheep to Mr. Culver, he told her. Culver, she scoffed. He'll only let them eat poison weed and kill themselves like he did the last ones. Betsy Ward took from the stocking a handful of coins. I see your point, said the drover. Maybe I can spare you eight sheep. The deal was swiftly made and Betsy Ward owned eight of the ragamuffin beasts. Josiah Ward built a pen to hold them. The children petted the sheep, hugged them round the fat, fuzzy necks, and even tried to ride them. That night, while the sheep mulled about in the pen, Betsy Ward sheared them all in her dreams. Come morning, she found that two of them had been slaughtered by wolves. She gathered the wool from the bodies, washed and carded, and spun it. She would weave it into cloth for breeches. Every night afterward, she and her husband locked the surviving sheep in the cabin. The children, as they fell asleep, could hear the animals breathing and could smell the luscious, oily hair. Even if they'd had a hundred eyes, the wards could not watch the sheep every minute. On a Sunday, while the family sang hymns at the meeting house in Ravenna, one of the sheep ate poison weed, swelled up, and died. Another sheep drowned in the creek on a day when the family was helping neighbors harvest corn and another sheep, trotting alongside the children as they rolled barrel hoops, broke its leg in a groundhog hole. Betsy Ward set her mouth hard every time a sheep died, and she salvaged every last bit of fleece. Of the three sheep still alive the following spring, only one was a ewe. But the ewe gave birth to lambs, which in due time gave birth to their own lambs, which grew woolly and fat on the lush grass, and so on, season after season, until Betsy Ward eventually owned an entire flock, all sprung from that stocking full of Connecticut coins. 
Her wheel spun through the day, her loom clacked into the night. Dressed from head to toe in wool, her children at last were warm. Thank you for watching The Joyful Bookshelf. If you liked today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos.